YouTube, welcome back to my channel. My name is McPato and this is McPato PC. And today I'm bringing you guys another Vega related video. Uh, today's video is basically me taking the first Vega driver. Uh, I believe it was the first. It was a Crimson Relive driver version 17.8.1 from August 14th, 2017. And I compare the performance to today's latest driver which is the Adrenaline 18.6.1 driver which released on June 13th today is June 20 June 28th so uh, pretty recent driver it's the most recent we have <laughs> so anyway the idea is to see what kind of performance has been uh, gained or obtained through driver uh, optimizations alone so uh, I'll get into the idea here in just a minute but uh, that's what I did I originally planned to have 14 games I ended up with only 11 uh, and before uh, anybody says why isn't there any direct DirectX 12 or Vulcan titles in your little sampling uh, I'm having a heck of a time guys figuring out the software to do uh, benchmarking with DirectX 12 or Vulkan. So I use Fraps uh, for all my benchmarking. It's really easy and then I just take the information, pop it in uh, Fraps and it spits out the, uh, the numbers I need, the average, the 1% and the 0.1% uh, lows. With DirectX 12, that doesn't even work. I can't uh, record any performance with uh, Fraps or Fraps, Fraps. Sorry. Um, and so what I, I'm trying different software solutions. Um, one that I'm using is called OCAT. It's developed by AMD. It works sort of, but it's. Uh, I believe it's based off Presentmon or something like that. Um, anyway, I haven't had time to play around with it enough. And the few times I've tried to benchmark with it, the numbers are way off, like way off. One run, let's say average FPS or 90. The next one, it's 65. The next one, it's 90. The next one, it's 22. Like, okay, maybe not 22, but it's all over the place so I can't trust any of the information I'm getting from that so there will probably be a similar video in the future probably with DirectX 11 versus DirectX 12 performance improvements uh, or Vulcan uh, but that's not today today's video I decided to go a different route take some games uh, I'll just read you guys the sampling here we got Final Fantasy 15. I'm using the free benchmarking tool for that. Uh, Assassin's Creed Origins, Ghost Recon Wildlands, uh, Deus Ex Mankind Divided, Civilization 6, Total War Warhammer, uh, Batman Arkham Knight, Rise of the Tomb Raider, uh, Bioshock Infinite, Grand Theft Auto 5, The Division, and that's it. I also intended to do the Division DX12, to compare DX11, same thing with the Rise of the Tomb Raider, and Man uh, Dusex Mankind Divided. That didn't work out, so I didn't do it. Um, also, I meant to benchmark Crisis. Just picked it up on the summer Steam sale, uh, but the benchmarking tool would not launch with the old driver, so I couldn't do that. I also had a problem launching or running Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, so I did not end up benchmarking it. And Metro Last Light crashed like crazy using the old driver, so I couldn't do it uh, for that one either. So those are the games we ended up with. Uh, good mix of old and new. Um, so today is going to be a little different. I only have three charts. Uh, I'm going to talk over the chart and just cover the information and then we'll summarize and then I'll give you guys my thoughts afterwards but as, as the uh, the thumbnail for this video suggests 
AMD is known for its fine wine effect and aging uh, gracefully with time and becoming better with time. So we're going to find out if that is in fact what is happening with Vega and uh, we're going to go uh, over it one by one. There are mixed results. I'm uh, pretty surprised actually with uh, some of what happened but um, is it fine wine or is it sour milk? We're going to find out. Uh, so with uh, the concept out of the way and again I'm testing uh, the AMD Crimson driver 17.8.1 uh, which I believe is the launch driver for Vega uh, and comparing that with the latest and greatest from AMD the AMD Adrenaline 18.6.1 driver um, so those are the two extremes there's about uh, nine or ten months in between so a good amount of time for AMD to have made some improvements to the architecture and optimize the, the software. Uh, I will say I do love the Adrenaline software regardless of what I'm about to tell you guys here. Uh, it's pretty good pretty good stuff for recording, for monitoring and uh, the Radeon Chill etc. And uh, just before I jump in guys also just worth mentioning I have a giveaway active right now. The draw is taking place July 26, 2018 to celebrate my one year anniversary on YouTube. So if you guys are interested in that, I will put a uh, link in the video at the end, or at the end of this video, I'll put a link to that video, uh, which explains how you guys can enter. It's very easy, subscribe, leave a comment on that video. And uh, up for grabs is an EK water block, Supremacy Evo, Nickel Plate, uh, or Nickel Plexi water block for a CPU. All right. So if you're interested in that, definitely check out that video following this video. Okay, so the concept is out there. I've explained that to you guys. Uh, I've explained the challenges with the crashing, a lot of problems with some games. It took forever. Uh, so they're definitely more stable. We can get that out of the way right now. Games are more stable with the later drivers than they were with the launch driver. Some of them would hardly run. So, that's good. Um, <clears throat> my system that I uh, did the testing with is comprised of, uh, obviously, an AMD Vega 64. It's a Sapphire Reference Edition with the blower style cooler. Still running the fan cooling for cooling. Uh, I've got an Intel i7-6700K, that's the Skylake CPU, overclocked to 4.6 gigahertz on all four cores. I have 32 gigabytes of G-Skill Ripjaws 5 RAM running at uh, 2700 megahertz and it's an Asus uh, Maximus 8 Hero motherboard. So with that out of the way, uh, let's uh, let's get into some charts, have a look, and uh, see what you guys think. So here we go. Okay, so starting the uh, the presentation here, guys. Uh, how this works it looks a little complicated, perhaps at first, but uh, basically we've got the eleven games listed from left to right, and then you'll see two average, two one percent low, and two point one percent low readings. The top three represent the older driver and the bottom three represent the newer driver and in terms of the bars the leftmost bars in every game's box represent the old driver while the right bars represent the uh, the new driver that's the same for each of the games so I'll give you guys some time to have a look at those and then we'll move along to chart number two. All right, moving along to the second chart. Here we have a visual representation of the percentage increase when using the new driver as compared to the old driver. And how this chart works, basically you have a look at uh, Final Fantasy 15 here at the far left 
we can see that there's an increase of 7.5% in average FPS, an increase of 9.1% in both 1% and 0.1% lows. Uh, I'll let you guys take some time to have a look at the chart, and then we'll move along to the third chart. All right, so here we've got the third chart, which shows the combined performance averages for each of the three segments. So the average FPS, 1% low, 0.1% low. And as you can see overall, we are in the positive with an increase of 4.45% in average FPS. Uh, this is compared to the 11 games averaged out. 6.8% uh, for the 1% low and an increase of 9.4% for the 0.1% low. Alright, so we're gonna wrap things up here in just a minute. Before we do, I just wanted to cover a few items and then give you just a brief thought. Before I do that, however, I forgot to mention in my system specs that I'm actually running my Vega overclocked 3.5% in Wattman, and it's got that undervolt that I talked about in my undervolting video as well. And the HBM2 is overclocked to 1100 uh, megahertz. Sorry, I forgot to mention that in the specs, but I thought it'd be best to mention it here. Um, so you can probably, obviously at stock stock, things would be lower, but performance percentages should be about the same. Um, regardless of that, let's move on into my, uh, my thoughts here. Uh, so I just got the chart up on my screen just to make sure I cover everything. So if you see me looking around, I'm just looking at the chart. So overall, I think it's good. I think it's good news. Uh, predictably, games like uh, Final Fantasy XV, Assassin's Creed, Ghost Recon Wildlands, and The Division are all up pretty, pretty consistent with the lowest increase there being uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands average FPS at 4.2% while uh, Final Fantasy 15 is at 7.5% Assassin's Creed Origins 21.7 and the Division 8.4 those are all solid performance gains so great job there by AMD and probably predictably those are you know either the newer games or the more popular titles so it makes sense that AMD would want to optimize those first. Uh, games like Deus Ex Mankind Divided, however, which is an AMD Gaming Evolved title, I'm pretty sure, I believe it is. Uh, you know, either you could have two arguments there. Either it was already very well optimized, so there wasn't much left to do, uh, or, you know, they just haven't gotten around to it or can't do much with it. But it was only up average FPS, uh, an increase of 1.5%, uh, a bit more respectable at 4.2 for the 1% lows, but uh, a little bit disappointing on that one. Um, sorry, my dogs are fighting for a toy there. Um, also disappointing, obviously, uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, which I really expected would have gains probably similar to at the very least uh, Bioshock you know 2.2% for the average FPS but it was down in every one of the three uh, segments so down 3.1% for average and 1% and a massive 16.2% decrease in 0.1% lows which could result obviously in some stuttering or uh, lack of smooth gameplay so that's a step backwards for sure for AMD uh, but overall I would say where it matters AMD's put some resources in and has optimized um, whether this is fine wine or just normal optimization uh, I mean again you know looking at games like Assassin's Creed Origin where average FPS are up almost 22%. Uh, 1% lows are up almost well, just over 17 And 1.1% uh, lows are up 20.7%. That's massive. That's, uh, that's, that's a game changer, so to speak. 
And I think that um, AMD has obviously demonstrated the potential to, to, to make pretty significant improvements to some titles. And these aren't isolated uh, incidents or in instances either. Um, Joker Productions did one similar to this, but a little while ago, uh, where he compared, I don't know, seven or eight games, I think. Uh, and he found pretty significant increases there as well. So my sampling is a little bit more obscure. Um, you know, it's not all AAA titles, which predictably probably would be a, a lot more uh, than, uh, you know, Bioshock Infinite, you know. <laughs> but overall, I think this speaks very well for AMD, that what they've been able to do with the drivers, and uh, with games like Far Cry 5 coming out, supporting more Vega features, like uh, Rapid Pack Math. Um, you know, I think the future looks bright for Vega. Uh, I would say that these are successful results. I would say not sour milk at all. And um, probably there's more good to come from AMD with future drivers. So I'll probably revisit this concept later on. Um, I'm also going to do one with HBCC on and HBCC off in a variety of games. And again, I'm going to do Vulcan DX12 performance increases as well. Something tells me we're going to see a lot more increase in those titles consistently across the board versus DX11. Um, so anyway, that's going to end this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button. Please consider subscribing. And if you're interested in that giveaway, click on the video that should be on the screen soon or now uh, for the giveaway happening July 26th, 2018. All right. And all you need to do there is uh, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment on the giveaway video. Okay, guys, thanks again for tuning in. And uh, if you have any ideas that you'd like to see me do with uh, Vega video content, leave it in the comments section down below and I'll try to get around to it if feasible. Uh, so again, thanks to everyone and we'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.